know, I mean, my name is Ray Patel, and I'm standing before the FOSTA organization because I want to become your vice president. Or, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just someone, anyone in time. He was a, he was just a Boston member, a bit timid as an incoming freshman, with the military haircut that cut a little bit too close to the skull, trying to find something to do with his spare time outside of studying. Right? Like most incoming students, he wanted to find a place to belong amidst thousands of others that walked the campus. So he decided to invest his time in Boston. It opened up his eyes to the cultural history that flows between the bricks that have built up our campus and introduce them to leaders and friends with an endless web of connections in the university community that he's so inspired by today. With that year in class, he learned how to voice out, resonating with pride down to his fingertips. Yes, I am a Filipino-American. That is who he is, and he felt inspired by it. The inspiration he gained fuels his involvement in Boston, participating in Project Family, Filipino Night, Filipino Days, Mugga Bees, Sayao, Northwest Plastic Conference, Philippine Olympics, Alliance Organization Events, Philippine History Month Workshops, Community Service Projects, Fonds Events, General Meetings, almost all the odds and ends in between. Except for All-Star, because, well, he's not the best at organized sports. <laughs> but, but the list continues on and on because that Plasta member, me, with a haircut a little bit too close to the skull, has grown as a member who, has, who still has the pride of saying, yes, I am Filipino American. Plasta helped me define who I am when I came to college, to grow as an individual and feel inspired to want to cause change. For the progress of other members, and most importantly, for the organization that I've belonged to for three years. Well, three years and counting. Because I'm not done yet. Not only have I simply grown, but I've kept my eyes open in the progress. Like, I don't know what that means, but... Um, well, let's see. I see myself as an analytical observer, reflective learner. The members who the officers were on my board when I was community service chair fuse from validating this. But going through Boss's odds and ends and in-betweens, I've noticed the trends in the organization that have gone over time. I've seen the growth of members that would spark that growth. I've seen the triggers that make members really want to stay. And unfortunately, I've seen what's causing to leave. I've observed the mentality of student organizations in the ECC organizations out and about campus, and within Northwest FASA, the Alliance. And I've seen collectives move mountains for a purpose that ignites their soul. But I've noticed that when we split into different individuals, that we can be passive. People from all generations, within our own included, call <coughs> our generation out for being docile, a little bit different. Even to things we should take note of, being a legacy organization with a rich history at UW. Seeing the development that comes from a strong sense of purpose and belonging, I want to spark the inspiration in others to want to cause, or to want to do something. Not just because others are doing it, by association. Our members have needs, and I've yet to meet, I've yet to meet a single person on this campus or in this club who's at UW who just sits back and lets the world spin by day after day. Everyone wants to improve on something. To define who they are, to contribute to something greater than themselves. Our members have educational, cultural, political, and social needs. And those needs can be fulfilled if they invest time in this organization. It can cause change in their lives and allow FASA to evolve in the process. I want people to care about this organization, to learn from each other's stories, no matter where they're from, in state, out of state, up, the north, south, wherever, anywhere in between, east coast, Poland, whatever. <laughs> to stay with one another and look out for one another as we all elevate for a little personal change and a little social change. In that way, I know FOSS will continue to uphold its legacy to foster unity within each other and pride within our culture. It sounds like a lot to want to spark inspiration to cause the change. Am I passionate enough to do this? I like to think so. Up to a point where I can't distance myself from FOSS no matter how hard I try. Am I a little crazy for not being finished with this organization and want to do something like this? Probably. But I'm going to do it because I feel Boston deserves someone who's a little bit passionate and a little bit crazy to, to help a team of inspiring individuals, the officer board, to lead by example, to lead the way, and cheer our members to tag along. I don't want to see this organization pass. So I want to solidify FASA as the medium for how and why members can connect, relax, learn, expand, and strive for academic, cultural, political, and social progress. Thank you. So 
what trends do you see and how would you approach eliminating those trends? What we're seeing some trends is I attend Joe who does like, oh, sorry, I like to walk around. Okay, I'm just gonna Is that alright, please? You can just make it a little more personal, right? Um, some things that I've noticed that um, when I go to general meetings as my third year in Boston, I decided to become just another member. Not just another member, but just to be a member. Right? I've seen people be very timid, and no one approaches them. They're just kind of sitting in the corner. Hi, I'm going to. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm here. But every, every other board here that, that's spoken today talked about the feelings of inclusion, because someone has approached them. So in that time, just because they have a personality that might be a little bit different, no one felt encouraged to approach them because it's a little bit, a little bit different because they didn't feel along with them before. So knowing that, I want the next board to want to, to be inviting, and I want the members to be invited, stick around, to really bring up those people and keep this organization more tight knit. That's your question. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. Um, so I've had the pleasure to work with Jermaine this year, and I really appreciate her leadership style, including her open-mindedness, um, being able to listen to others, and her willingness to collaborate with other officers, ultimately creating a positive environment. So my question to you is, how will your approach to leadership create a positive and respectable environment among the new officer board, and what attributes of a leader do you think work? Create a positive environment? I think I, take, I like to um, embrace, as I become a leader, is personal interactions. Right? To talk to someone and say, hey, my name's Ray, how are you doing? <laughs> Get to learn about who they are. Kind of find out what, who they are, what the experiences they've had, what traits they kind of uphold. And in a way, connecting everyone together through those similar pathways where everyone can feel equal, the same, in the collective. Right? That's the positive environment I want to create. That's your question. And also, um, can you answer the second part? Um, and what attributes of a leader do you think work as well? What attributes of a leader work? You need a little bit of passion. You need what you want. Because people always say, like, oh, um, I've been having trouble trying to um, entice people to want this. What I've learned is that you need to have a passion to want to stand as that person, to want to bring people along. Right? Um, oh, I lost it. <laughs> um, you need to have the passion to want to have overwhelming passion for whatever you want to do, to put it onto someone new or someone who is lacking in finding their identity, finding the passion, finding something they want to change within themselves and bring them along with you. It's leisure by association. Anything else? Uh, I'll go with uh, as president, it, things can get hectic and you, you have to deal with a lot of things. And as the face of FASA, how are you going to maintain your own health? And like, like, what are you going like to do to, you know, keep yourself with with all the like with all the responsibilities that you have, like for example, working on sleep and <laughs> <laughs> That last little bit is like if if people know who I am or to some extent of my personality, I don't sleep that much. I'll be honest. I'll be straight up with everybody. I don't sleep that much because with what I try to get involved in, I maximize my I try to maximize my day. And but I still know I need to recover. But. Um, I know I have to have a little self-control. I, I know I can't do everything. People tell me, oh, you're doing so great. But to me, I know I can't do everything. So knowing that reflective phase, reflective learning that I, you know, I sit and think about what am I doing? And with that process, I know that when I can't do it, I need to step back, take a breather, take a little rest, hashtag self-care, right? <laughs> continue on. Because being, being the president of Boston, you can't collapse. You can't show that you're weak. So you need to step back and keep going because you got. I have, I have the passion to keep on going. Thank you. So, last question. Thank you. All right. <laughs>
Yeah. Who's going to decide to switch and pursue their academic degree, which is good. It's against school. <laughs> um, but I want to kind of create the mentality, to inspire the mentality that this organization is important for everybody who is Filipino, Filipino American, and everything in between. Right? Because I want to make process solidify to the point where at the end of my term, I can say with confidence that there should be no open vacancies for officer positions. Because people want to keep this organization alive. Question? And that's the last question, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Does anyone have burning questions? Yeah, we got burning questions. Am I going to do this in How much time? How much time? That was already five, six minutes. Five more. Actually, I'll take the last question if you don't mind. Five more. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. We can have five more. Five more? I just said I'll take the last question, so. It's okay. Let's go ahead. Yeah, it was just the same question that asked Claudette. Since you're on a since you're on a platform now, speaking to the fossil community, um, like a third of the board is currently vacant. So, how are you? Uh, can you send a message to everyone here and everyone there um, to to apply and come with you on this? Journey, right? Like, as a likely president of Boston next year. And just keep in mind, you're still going to get elected. I mean, there's still an election right. process, so this position is not a sure. Okay, you might be running out of post, but it doesn't mean you can get elected. Just keep that in mind. Let's start with a question for the crowd. How many of you identify as being a little bit timid coming into Boston? How many of you still think you're timid now? <laughs> okay, true, got some people. But from what I've seen from people investing in the organization, that it changes mentalities, it changes lives, it grows confidence from the heart, right? Taking pride in who you are and your identity, right? If you feel like you're lacking in any way and you want to change something, take that need, linger on it, because that need will grow. Soon enough, it'll grow because you want to change yourself. And to change yourself, I would really recommend, if you have the time, because academics come first, <laughs> to take on office position. Because looking back, it's helped define who I am. I can say with confidence now that I'm Filipino American. And I, I can differ both sides, but being, a, being part of something larger than myself, seeing the culture that builds up our campus and keeps everybody well connected, it's nice to be part of the change and the influence that allows people to grow. So if you want to be part of the change, apply for the board. Yes. All right, so, I mean, you have a lot of candidates out here that have a lot of passion, but I think Ah. There's still some kind of vagueness as to like what plans do you guys have? I mean, what plan do you have when you're running for for the for the position? You know, I mean, you're going to be the face. You're going to be the leader. Okay, what is your plan to help out these officers or these chair folks that that's running who who might end up being the chair with little or no experience at all? What they're running on is heart, they're running on passion, but there's still an organizational structure that needs to be taken care of. I mean, you have a fundraiser that running on, 
on heart. How, how are you going to take care of that? And then you have a vice president that's, you know, that has apparently, you know, issues that you guys have to take care of. And how, how, how are you guys, because that's being projected, you know, I mean, that's just how it's being interpreted. So how are you going to get everybody together? And why are you running for this position? I mean, why, why, man? Why, why, why? Bailey? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Bailey, I'm looking back and thinking how much experience that I've gained from taking ownership of this organization. Um, for people that are just kind of going on heart and going on a bit of passion, and just wanting to do something, I appreciate that. But because of the people that I've met, through this organization, the connections that I could I've kind of build, um, the connections that people in the community have. I'll do, I think, there's a very general amount of mention to it where I like kind of do things as kind of around, <coughs> you know, with academics. It'd be the same process where I take person A who has a lot of passion and not a lot of knowledge, person B who has a lot of passion and has the knowledge, and bridge it all together. And once they bridge that connection, they can create the change they want. To, to grow this organization. And through that growth, that's how I want to change Boston, to make it stronger, to make it more stable. Does that make sense? I mean, it's 97 years, so I'm pretty sure it's somewhat stable. Are you saying that it's not stable? No. Well, yes. Kind of. Let's see. It's stable in a sense where I don't see it going away in like one year. But I can see there's always the uncertainty of how it will last in the next year, and the year after that, and the year after that. Everybody on board is always wondering when, when like March hits, like, oh, who's going to run? Oh, who's going to do it? I don't know what's going to happen. There's always the uncertainty. So I don't see it as it's going to fall apart in one year. But I don't want to have that doubt. It almost did. right now? No. At one point in time in the history of the organization, it almost did. You don't want to go through that. to run in the first place, because it wouldn't have sat in front of the members and the alumni and everybody in between who wanted to tag along to this meeting, to this election meeting today, to shout to the world what they want, what they need. That's your question? Okay, that's all the time we have. Thank you. Thank you.